Well, good Monday morning, Liberty University. Oh, that's pretty weak. Come on, good Monday morning, Liberty University. All right, I want to get to know you real fast. You just heard a little bit about me. I just want to get a snapshot of who's in the building because I haven't been in this building in a long, long time. In fact, the last time I was in this building, I was doing a skit on this stage. It was much smaller, a lot less people in the room, but I jumped out of the back of a truck to the theme song from Sanford and Son. So, yeah, I'm surprised anybody knows what Sanford and Son is, Johnny. That's awesome. All right, so let me get a real quick snapshot of where you are from. If you're from the West Coast, let me hear you. All right, Midwesterners, where are you? How about you Yankees from the North? I was about ready to get cocky about this next group because that's where I hail from, but the Yankees scared me, so there's a little bit of a warning because I saved the best for last. If you're from the South, let me hear you. Oh, yes. All right. All right, now listen. I'm going to give you some really practical stuff today, but let me start with this one. If you ever do public speaking and you're just wanting to get the crowd engaged, just do that right there and always end with the South because they're always going to come through for you. Yeah. Uh, hey, listen, let me tell you something real quick. I. Uh, I'm out of my mind excited to be here today because as I look around this room, I'm just pulsating with excitement about the potential in this room. And I think you young people are so blessed with the people that come and speak to you. I hope you don't ever get tired. I hope you don't ever get bored with people telling you that there is amazing potential in this room. And that when these people say to you that life is meant to be lived for God and that what you can do in this room for Him to change the world can actually change the world. I hope you get that. I hope you get that. So I'm so blessed to be here. This place is very special to me. I spent four years here, 92 to 96. Yeah, I know. I don't look that old. Come on, let's be honest. We can do a close-up. No wrinkles. Uh, my wife Stacy is over here. She's really hot. She's in the white suit. We adopted our second child. My wife and I have adopted two boys. We adopted our second son, Chase, from the Liberty Godparent Home. Family Life Services right here about five years ago. And I'm very proud to introduce you to a very special lady in our lives. She's sitting next to my wife, Sierra. Would you stand up? She is Chase's birth mother. She is an online student here at Liberty University. And she is Chase's birth mother, our four-year-old, soon to be five-year-old. Give her a big hand. Yeah. Hey, that is a heroine, and we love her so much. So this place is very, very special to us. All right, you guys ready to dive in? Listen, if you got something to write with, we're going to go over some very simple stuff. What do we got? What happened? Anything? Who knows? All right. I got ADD, so it's like squirrel. All right. We're going to have some fun. We're going to get right to this, okay? Get ready to write. I want to talk to you about something that a mentor shared with me in my early 20s that's going to hit you right where you're at, and it's hugely important. And if you get this today, young people, listen to me, you're going to be so far ahead of the rest of the world, it'll blow your mind. You ready to go? We're going to talk about questions. How many of you in this room grew up in church? Let me see your hand real quick. All right, good. How many of you also went to church camps growing up? Okay. How many of you know this phrase, the will of God? How many of you actually right now know what it is for your life? A lot less hands, that's okay. Hey, that's okay. I didn't know either, and you ready for this? Our churches in America are full of people who have no idea what it is they're supposed to do with their life. I was a young person, I remember youth pastors and preachers and youth camp evangelists would say, young people, don't miss God's will for your life. And I'm out there going, I don't want to, but I don't know what it is, right? You know that anxiety. And right now you're in the most important transitional phase of your life. As you get ready to move into what adults like to say, the real world, right? And so what are the big questions we all ask? So if you grew up in church, you heard people say, hey, don't miss the will of God for your life. But you didn't hear a whole lot about how to find it. So today we're going to talk about it. What's the number one question we all ask? Deep 
in the dark crevices of our mind and our heart, many nights we lay awake, what should I do with my life? Or another way to say it is, why am I here? Why am I here? So how do we answer that big question? Here's how you answer it. Write this down. You ready? How do you answer the big question, what am I here for? You find your sweet spot. It's that simple. You find your sweet spot. But that begs another big question, Ken. Thanks for that great information. But how do I find my sweet spot? I'm glad you asked me. My mentor shared this with me when I was in my early 20s, and it rocked my world. It answers the big question, how do I find God's will for my life? You have got to find how God designed you. What should I do with my life? The answer is what he designed you to do, but how do you find that? Well, he's written on your heart a sweet spot. Here's how it goes. If I had a whiteboard up here, I'd draw two lines for you. So on your paper right now, draw two lines. Draw one line going this way on the left side, and on the right side, draw another line. On the left side, write strengths. On the other side, write passion. You find your sweet spot by finding the intersection of your greatest strength and your greatest passion. What are you really, really good at? Plot those things out in your dorm later. You can even do it now if you know instinctively. Some of you in here actually know this already. Some of you don't. It's okay. God wrote this on your heart. The will of God for your life is not the giant mystery that you think it is. It's not the unanswerable question that millions of Christians think it is. God, the creator of the universe, the person who designed you uniquely and wonderfully for this world, wrote it on your heart. What's your greatest strength? You may not know it yet. You can find it. Take a Strength Finders test. Strength Finders 2.0, it's very simple. It'll help you begin to dig through this. What's your greatest passion? This is what you do for free. This is what you think about every waking moment. It's what you want to charge with everything you've got. Your sweet spot in life is at the intersection of your greatest strength and your greatest passion. Let me illustrate what the sweet spot is not. How many of you watch American Idol or The Voice or any of these singing shows? Yeah. My wife and I, I guess, are technically old in this building, Johnny, so we still like American Idol. Yeah. How many of you have noticed in the auditions, don't you love the auditions? Right now, it's funny to you. When you become a parent, you're going to get very sad about this. You know what I'm talking about. Kid walks in. We've seen him on camera for about a minute telling us how great they are. Goes something like this. Oh, yeah, I'm really good. I'm really good. Everybody in my life, all my friends told me I can sing really good. And we all begin to get the pucker factor. Oh, geez. This could be ugly. They walk into the audition room, and they proceed to butcher a song humiliate themselves, and then the judges tell them the truth, which is you stink. You can't sing. You shouldn't try to do this for a living. And then what happens? Hilarity ensues. They get outraged. They doubt the experts. They walk out in the hallway while the cameras follow them, and they swear at the camera and flip them off. You're nuts. You're crazy. I'll be a star. That's not the sweet spot. What's happening there? Music or to be famous, unfortunately, with this younger generation, to be famous is their great passion. So American Idol or being a star or singing is high on their passion line. You staying with me? But it's really low on their talent line. That's not the sweet spot. That's why they leave so confused and angry. It was really high up here, but they don't have the talent to make it. Now let's flip it. Corporate America, guy's knocking down half a million dollars a year or more. He's really good. She, this woman, this man, they're good at their job. They get paid top dollar, but they're miserable. They fall into addiction. They cheat on their spouse. They're walking around like zombies. They're miserable. What's the situation there? Really good at their job, high on their strength line, but really low on their passion line. I'll give give you a great example. I love the game of basketball. Later tonight, I'll go to the national championship game in Atlanta to root my Michigan Wolverines on. Go blue! 
Sorry, Johnny, I had to get that in. But I'm passionate about the game of basketball. But look at me. I'm a five foot nine white guy who can't jump over a piece of paper. <laughs> if I tried to be a professional basketball player, I would starve. That's not what the sweet spot is. This is simple, but so profound. Let me illustrate one of my favorite stories of what the sweet spot is and how it plays out. Anybody in here, you young people, know who David Copperfield is, the magician? I'll bet you didn't know this. David Copperfield is the highest grossing entertainer in the history of the world. Not Garth Brooks, not Michael Jackson. David Copperfield has sold, ready for this? More than $4 billion in ticket sales. I was watching him on Oprah's new show. I do watch Oprah and I'm proud of it. Thank you, sir. See me afterwards, we can exchange man cards. Hey, I love Oprah. She's got this new show called Oprah's Next Chapter. And in it, she just goes to these famous people's homes and it ends up being an hour long show and she sits down and she interviews. I'm an interview junkie and so I love watching this stuff. And so I was recently watching an interview with David Copperfield. She goes to the Bahamas. David Copperfield's so rich. Bahamas, there we go. Uh, David Copperfield's so rich, he bought 10 islands in the Bahamas, okay? David's doing real well. And uh, so they're hanging out at David's place, right? David's place, do you like that? I worked that in. I wish you could have seen what David's place looked like when I was here, you'd just come up here and give me a hug. Uh, so she's interviewing David Copperfield and she gets halfway through the interview and she says, how did you figure out that magic was what you wanted to do with your life? And he said something that blew me away and it perfectly illustrates what the sweet spot is and what it looks like when we walk in it. He said, Oprah, when I was a kid, I went to New York City one day and my mom and dad took me into a magic shop and I just picked up a couple tricks and I was pretty good at it, so they bought me a few. Went home and we figured out, I figured out, they figured out, I was really good at doing these tricks, so they bought more and they bought more and they bought more. Then he started performing as a child performer. Bottom line is, everybody figured out, David Copperfield was a natural genius when it came to doing magic trips, tricks and illusions. He said, but Oprah, what I really loved growing up were stories. I loved to read. I loved to watch movies, television. I loved going to plays. And he said, I just figured out one day as a teenager that what I needed to do was figure out a way to tell stories with my magic. Strength, magic. Passion, stories. The greatest entertainer in the history of the world figured out his sweet spot very early on. It's that simple. That's what it looks like. Now, okay, Ken, now what do I do? I find my sweet spot. What's next? You ready? This is unbelievable. Get ready to write this down. This is huge. Step in it and stay there. Step into your sweet spot and stay there. It is not enough, young people, to find your sweet spot. Our world is littered with people who know what they should be doing and they won't step in it. They're scared. They're scared of the unknown. And let me just tell you something, young people. I am 38 years old. I sat where you are. I am standing in my sweet spot because I had the courage to step in it and stay there. And that's when God, your Abba Father, steps up and says, yes, my son. Yes, my daughter, you're where I want you to be and you don't know what's coming next and now I can step in and build the bridge for you and I can get the glory. It's faith. You gotta step in it and stay there. It's not enough just to find it. You gotta step in it and you gotta stay there. Let me tell you my favorite, favorite sweet spot story of a guy who stayed with it. Jeremy Lin, you all know Jeremy Lin well, do you not? You know the story, I'll go through it really fast. Stay with me and watch this. Guy goes to Harvard, doesn't get drafted. Nobody wants to draft an Asian guy from Harvard to play in the NBA. It's just a reality. Nobody gives him a shot. The guy can play basketball. He signs a free agent contract, gets cut two times last season. Gets cut twice. Goes to the New York Knicks, he's down, he's depressed, he's sleeping on his brother's couch. 
He tells his brother two nights before he gets in his first Nick game, he's on a temporary contract. He tells his brother, I think I'm done. I think I'm going to just go into ministry. I think I'm done. I can't take it anymore. And the reason I tell you that part of the story is because when you find your sweet spot, young people, listen to me, it's not all roses. It's still tough. It still requires faith. Jeremy Lin is about ready to quit. You know the story. He gets put in the game. The New York Knicks are terrible. They're awful. They have no other point guards. Sorry, it was just a fact. They were bad. <laughs> and Mike D'Antoni, the coach at the time, says, Lynn, get in the game. And the rest is history. Do you think for one second that Jeremy Lin figured out how to play basketball right then and there? No. He was in his sweet spot. And the right time came along. How many of you heard the phrase, oh, he was in the right place at the right time? I hate that phrase. I hate it. Because it's usually said like this at a party. Oh, did you hear about so-and-so? Oh, yeah, really cool, amazing. Yeah, he was in the right place at the right time. Yeah, dumb luck. It's not true. I hate that. We should say it like this, and I would like you all to start a revolution, right? Next time you hear somebody say that, go, no, he was in the right place, and the right time happened. He was in the right place, and the right time happened. Here's what's true about finding your sweet spot and stepping in it and staying there. Is that if you find the sweet spot, you put all of your energy, all of your energy into staying in the right place. Find the right place, stay there. Put all of your energy, listen to me, the next three or four years are huge for you all. Don't worry about the rest of it. Worry about one thing, finding and staying in the right place. And if you do that, the right time will find you. I promise you, just like it found Jeremy Lin. He stayed where he was supposed to stay. He got his opportunity, and he made the most of it. The legendary John Wooden, I had an opportunity to spend a day with him one time. One of my favorite quotes from John Wooden is, when opportunity comes, it's too late to prepare. It's too late. You'll miss your opportunity if you're not in the right place. I don't even care about the right time. If I've learned anything in 38 years, is that my plans don't match up with God's timetable. He's not interested in my timetable. What he's interested in is do I find the right place? And then do I have the faith to stay there and wait for his time? And then folks will marvel at God's timing. Chick-fil-A. Johnny and I were talking about this. He introduced me. Listen, do you realize I was doing a Saturday radio show? Do you know how many people listen to Saturday radio shows? Three. <laughs> One of them was my wife. That's where you got to start. And I have the CEO of Chick-fil-A come on my show, and I'm hustling just for the chance to break into drive time radio to hustle. Day job, working on the dream job. Already written the book, hustling. And Dan Cathy comes on my show, I ask him a harmless question, he answers it, but he takes it in another direction. Three weeks later, a gay blogger finds the interview and puts it up there, next thing you know, my little teeny tiny show on Saturdays in Atlanta is splashed all over every major media outlet you can imagine, from the nightly news to Jon Stewart and on and on and on it goes. I had no control over that. That has nothing to do with me. Do you get how funny God thinks that is? He thinks that's hilarious. You're in the right place, Ken Coleman. You're an absolute nobody. But I'm gonna use your little show for my glory. It's unbelievable, you can't believe the opportunities I've had. A prominent gay activist flies me in on his private plane two weeks later to spend a day with him talking about how evangelicals and those in the gay community can have a very civil dialogue. What am I doing there? What am I doing in this situation? The answer, I'm doing exactly what God has designed for me to do, but I had no idea how it was going to work out. Get in your sweet spot and stay there. Now, I want to make a quick note that I think you're going to struggle with as you get a little bit older. Some of you may now. Johnny, I know you and I struggle with this, so I'm going to put you on the spot. I know this is true. I struggle with this. When you find your sweet spot, there's something really exciting about it because you know you're where you're supposed to be and things just start to happen for you because you're where you're supposed to be. But then this temptation comes along to always be thinking about the next. 
You like that, Johnny? I'm always thinking about the next. Always think, what's next? What's next? Yes, this is great. Yes, my, my first book came out. Yes, it had a first great week. What's next? And the temptation is to get so obsessed with the next that we miss what God has for us in the now and we ultimately sacrifice the next. The very thing we're obsessed about. What's next, God? What's next? What can I do to get over here? I want to keep moving. It's natural. Progress is wired into us. But I would be remiss if I didn't give you this advice today. Because you go-getters that are in the building, those of you that are ready to charge hell with a water pistol, you know who you are. You're always going to be tempted to be thinking about what's next. And I want to say it again because I want you to catch this. God wants you to be totally present in the now. Because he's got you there on purpose. He puts you there. And if I'm so obsessed about what's next, I'll miss what's for me in the now, who God wants me to meet, who God wants me to serve, who God wants me to help, who God wants me to learn from. If we're so obsessed with what's next, we'll miss what we need in the now and ultimately sacrifice what's next. Okay, so we've gone through what should I do with my life, what God designed you to do. How do I figure that out? Find your sweet spot, the intersection of your greatest strength and your greatest passion. What do I do when I find my sweet spot? Step in it. And stay there. Let's do that together. Step in and say, what do I do when I find my sweet spot? Oh, I love crowd reaction. Finally, what's it look like? What is sweet spot living or walking in God's will look like? It's all around you. You see it all the time. Let me go back to my American Idol illustration. This is one of my favorite stories I've seen in all the years of American Idol. Last season... It was a little gal from the Northeast called Holly Cavanaugh. Holly Cavanaugh, little teeny, petite little gal, blonde hair, very shy. I remember seeing her in some of the early auditions. She just looked terrified when she'd walk up and stand in front of the judges to sing. And I'll never forget, she had an amazing voice, but she still wasn't experiencing the confidence. Fast forward to she made it to the final 12 or whatever it is. I'll never forget one specific night, it just hit me. She walked on the stage and the song began and even as she walked out to get ready to sing, you could still see her natural timidity and her introvert personality. But when the music started and she began to sing, it was only a few bars into the song when you could see the metamorphosis take place. And you saw this little shy, timid girl begin to transform into this amazing, beautiful songbird and she's hitting these towering notes and she's moving me in my pajama pants at home well that was a little weird (laughs) it's not how I meant it but I realize it and you got to step into it right oh geez put that on the highlight reel All right, hey, I know, I know. You get my point. I'm I'm at home watching it and I'm moved. I'm moved by the power in her voice. And that in that moment, she's stepping up and she's doing, stay with me. She's doing what she was designed to do. How does this little timid gal stand in front of millions on television and belt out a very difficult song. It's because she was in her sweet spot. That's what it looks like when we step into our sweet spot and we find ourselves in that moment of great fear, in that moment of great anxiety, that, hey, I'm meant to do this. And God steps up in those moments and gives us great courage. I'm so blown away by what's happening on this university. It's so cool to be watching this from afar. 
and I've had the opportunity to step into some cool situations with some national media coverage. I'm an MC of the Catalyst Leadership Conference, been able to interview some cool people. This book, I mean, it's just a complete, unbelievable act of God. But what fires me up most is when I come back today and I look around this room and we have no idea who among us will literally change the world. But here's the, here's the advice I wanna give. I talked about the temptation for focusing on the next earlier. Here's another temptation. So many people identify their sweet spot as I've laid it out to you today. But somewhere along the way, life happens. Roadblocks, detours, sickness, tragedy, it happens. And you start getting your mind off of what your sweet spot is and what God has uniquely designed you to do and the call that is specifically on your life and the niche that only you can fill. You get your mind off of that and you start going, I'm not rich, I'm not famous, I'm not powerful, I'm not gonna make a huge impact. And let me tell you something, you don't have to make a huge impact that a bunch of people see and that people talk about and it gets tweeted and it gets on the news. You only have to make the one impact that you were called to do. So whether it's on a trip to Uganda with the field hockey team, I'm, I'm telling you, God's going to put some people in, you, in your path. You have no idea what it is that's going to happen out of that trip. In fact, you may never know, but one prayer, one hug, one encouragement on the other side of the world could forever change a village, could change a family. You see where I'm going? Don't get hung up, people, in the stats of life. Don't get hung up in what other people are doing. And I'm going to tell you something. In this room alone, if 50% of you get this sweet spot thing and really work hard on identifying what your greatest strength is and your greatest passion and where they intersect, you don't have to know all the details. You don't have to know, but you're going to be so far ahead of everybody else, it's going to blow your mind. I said it before, I'll say it again. The world is full of people walking around like zombies. That's why zombie shows are so big right now. People identify with it. Ooh. Oh, it's Monday. When's Friday coming? I'm having fun, but young people, listen to me. How dare you live that way? How dare you live that way? The creator of the universe has designed you to do something absolutely that nobody else can do. And it doesn't matter how big or how grand it is. But it's what you're supposed to do. Life is so short. I can't tell you how many of my friends from my days at Liberty are dead, gone. I don't know if I've got tomorrow. Donald Miller, the writer, said this so well. I'll paraphrase it. But may you live your life that if you go young, people shake their head, not because they're sad, but they shake their head because, wow, they were doing so much, we're going to miss them. What's your sweet spot? What is it? What's so unique about you that only you can do it? Figure it out. I'll close with this. The poet Henry David Thoreau famously once said, it's one of my favorite quotes ever, if you can write this down, if you can tweet it, it's going to help people. You ready? Most men, and I'll add the word women to his quote, most men and women lead lives of quiet desperation. Most men and women lead lives of quiet desperation. This is the sad part. And go to the grave with the song still in them. And go to the grave with the song still in them. That's so true, folks. It's so true. So my challenge to you today is this. What's your song? What's your song? Not the song that your dad wants you to sing. Uh-oh. Not the song that your mama wants you to sing. Not the song your grandmother, grandfather wants you to sing. Not the song your youth pastor wants you to sing. Not the song your pastor wants you to sing. What is your song? You find your sweet spot. 
the intersection of your greatest strength and your greatest passion, you will find your song. And I implore you today to find your song and to start singing it and sing it loud and sing it loud every day, every month, every year of your life. Sing it loud to the top of your lungs until you draw your last breath. And when you enter heaven and you stand before our creator, the great conductor, the person, the God of the universe who wrote that song on your heart, may he look at all of us and say, well sung, well sung. Father in heaven, I pray a special prayer of blessing over these young people, the untold amount of potential that is sitting in this room right now can set the world in a completely different trajectory. I pray that you'd speak to these young people today, Father, to hold them close and hug them and let them know you have written a song on their heart, a song that only they can sing. Father, I pray a prayer of courage as they step into the ambiguity that is called life, that they would choose to paint on a blank canvas their masterpiece and not live a life of paint by numbers. Father, that they would seize the moment, even now today, to spend all of their energy finding the right place, the place where you want them to be, the place you have designed for them to be, that they would have the courage and the faith to stay the course. Father, we're so immeasurably blessed. You have done so much for us. May we spend all that we have and give every matter of our being to finding our sweet spot and to living the story and singing the song you want us to sing. It is in your matchless, precious name, Jesus, that we all say, amen.